excited this morning because I'm going up to a friend's house who has a tumbling, barreling sort of machine. And about a month ago I gave him my bag of shame, which as regular viewers will know, is the bag of finds that don't necessarily fit in with the normal stuff that I would keep for display purposes. But with a little bit of cleaning they might just throw up a few surprises. So. I'm going up to find out exactly what was in that bag because a lot of the stuff in there was very corroded and crusty. Now I'm also going to have a look at what he's done with a little bit of the stuff that was in that bag of shame. There was quite a lot of coins, a lot of half pennies and a lot of pennies. These are the pre-decimal ones which are pretty big and Gary makes trench art. He makes it in exactly the same way as people did in the First and Second World War. And he learnt these skills from his grandfather who used to actually make trench art in the Second World War. So this is, it's going to be fascinating. Now Gary's got a real passion for history and he loves finding out things about the people who fought in the First and the Second World War. Examining who they were, where they came from, what they did before, during and after the war. I will put a link to his channel below in the video description and I'll also put a link to the stuff that he sells on eBay because this trench art is very it's ta very tactile it's lovely to have in your hands and it's it's a real homage to what was going on in the first and the second world war and with the first world war centenary coming up these little things that he makes are a real reminder of that period in history now this is a guy who is totally different to, uh, not a lot, but some of the people who you see on YouTube. You see these guys detecting on the Eastern Front. Some of them have a few archaeologists behind them. They find a helmet. Here lads, we found a helmet, find a machine gun, we found a machine gun. The archaeologists then move in and get the particulars off the bodies, i.e. badges any sort of helmets with any sort of information about that person on, they get that person back buried properly and get it back to the relatives. So different to these jackasses who I see, ah, I found a machine gun, look at me, I found a machine gun. <laughs> that is basically grave robbing. It's a disgrace. Um, I can't stand seeing that. Chances are, you, you, you don't just find somebody throwing a machine gun away. A machine gun is generally with a body. And if you remove that machine gun, if you then dig a bit further, you take the badges, you take the personal artifacts of that person, that body's never going to get back to its relatives. It's sickening to think of that. But there's plenty of people who do that. They're basically just modern day grave robbers. This stuff that Gary makes is replica trench art. He hasn't gone grave robbing for this stuff. This is stuff that he's made himself. It's a real homage to the First World War and it's, it's just lovely stuff to have. So I'm going up to his place now. He's about five minutes away. I'm already late, but uh, time is relative, you know. I'm going to have a look at some of the stuff that he's found, some of the stuff that he's barreled in this tumbler and just have a good bit of cracks. I don't even know what order it's going to run, but um, just just watch and enjoy. So that's the actual barrel that you chucked so that's in. The, that's, the, that's the sort of stuff you... And you can chuck that many things in it. Chuck what? all that stuff in there. Oh yeah, right. I mean, there's bloody thimbles, there's those out of the cow's right. ears, you know, right. the yeah. identity t identity tags. They give a good signal, don't they? People actually collect those, you know, the farmers. The farmers love to collect them. Oh, Apparently they keep a record of the different numbers of the animals that they've had in the past. Right. And there's records that still exist and they go way back to the 30s and things, so... Right, that's a good they one. They can't then. find de details about the animal, if it was a prized beast or whatever, yeah. I don't know. And anyway, so you put the bits and pieces in there. Yeah. That's a blinking, that's the bottom of a uh, furniture, you know, the furniture, the old furniture with the, the wheels on the bottom, the cast, oh, yeah. casters, so there's been a caster on there, yeah. and then that sat on the foot of a, a Georgian 
table or something so you can wheel it around. Yeah, yeah. That would go over the wood over the top. So and that, like I say anyway, all these bits and pieces you put in a barrel like that. You put some shapes in there, but I haven't got any left. So you, you get the shapes with them, you know, the like little silver shapes, different yep. ones. Right. And then you just put, put your water in there and you get a burnishing soap and you put the burnishing soap in there. Mm -hmm. One of the paddles has broke off on mine, on the side, because there's normally three of these, but it's still grafts. Right. Obviously put your fines in there, your bag of shame, or whatever you like to call it. And then, with a little bit of awkwardness... Of the Irish. Me bag of shite. <laughs> <laughs> you put your top on, the other half on there, lift the front edge a bit, and just squeeze the air out. Just push it down. And then onto there, and then you know, off she goes. So you just push down on that side that much. And that's off she goes, and she just runs and runs and runs. So, how, how long would you leave it before having a first look? Well, I, still, I left the uh, main about nine hours. That right. About nine hours. Right. So you can kind of set it away before you go to work. And oh, when I you come back, in, uh, and it's cleaned up. Though. That's about nine hours to get that kind of result. So that's only nine hours. Nine hours, and you'll get that result out of them really monkey pennies that you found. You know? I am in the woods. They were awful. You know? And then you can take them to the stage further if you want by buffing them up to that. You know. Mm -hmm. So that's what the light when it come out. And if you buff them up a little bit, you'll get them like that. Yeah, yeah. At least you can see something on them, you know. You can do some of the nicks for years out of them. That's good. That, I think I'm going to get one of them. Is that oh, that? I do. Because there's I loads do, of you know, stuff. You, you, you can see you get all of this sort of thing. You know, it's, it's all green and monkey and covered in soil. You clean yeah, it up a little yeah. bit. But if you wanted to take them further and start buffing them up and make them into displays and yeah. put them on in cases and things, it's nice to have a barreling machine. You can barrel them up, then you can polish them yourself. Yeah, and you could, I mean that, you know, that you know, polished up, and it is a nice display. You know, thing. when you think about it, you get a lot of these in a, in a case display with a little bit of information in the background. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic, you know, yeah. fantastic little gifts to give away to, to farmers as well. Some of them are alright. Some of the completely goose. There's the one there, look. It's half reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Put a bit of metal polish on it and we'll buff that one up. We've got this famous old uh, brewer pad out. You see them at home going, ah, oh, what the hell? <laughs> oh my god, he's destroying it. <laughs> Just purely for display purposes for yourself. You know, at the end of the day. We'll find thousands of these right things. Right, I did. I was just about to say we'll find thousands of these in the yeah, next few years. Yeah. I'd rather have them where you can see them and display them and they look nicely polished and clean and that kind of thing. And I put a bit of uh, metal polish on when I find it. I've got to put that down there. So, do you just get that in like a hardware store? Ah, I just... Metal I just... Carpet and... It's, it's chrome polish, that's what it is, but it's... Right? It works on it. Oh my god, you don't want to be in stuff up like that! Sacre-la! Sacre-la! Go from the coin! Sacre-la! So, you know, after being the barrel machine and then put a little bit of polish on it, metal polish, put it into here, and you know, you do get a, a nice, decent result if you want to display them, so, I mean, rather, yeah. rather than just leave them in, in a in right monkey state that you found them in the field. I mean, at least you can display them, you know. They were hellish monkey, weren't they? So that's that's the kind of result you'll get from coming out the ground on some of them. That's it. So go into a barrel machine, come out of a barrel machine, and then just give them a bit of metal polishing on a button wheel, and there you go. That's that's incredible, because they were crusty as hell when I brought them right. Well, there you go, there. So on the subject of trench art, yeah. These are some of the things you've been making out of 
Well, I think, you know, when you're finding these pennies and half pennies and things like that, and it's coming up to the centenary where it is a centenary come August, started putting these trench yard items together out of the coins. So these are like a, a match striker. There you go, there's you know, the end for it. So you put your matches in there, they're made in the trench yard style. You strike it on the on the striking part of there. I've made them from the period coins. Um, I have the various battles that was fought. So that's uh, Arras, which was fought in 1914. Mm -hmm. Which matches with the coin. Which matches with the coin. And I press out these uh, bodies and I make the old fashioned put and takes, which was a one of the favourite World War One games played by soldiers because they weren't at the front every hour of the day, you know. It was such an easy game and to the, play as well, isn't it? Right, you know, right. you, you could play it with coins or you play it with matches or anything. Right. It's so simple. It's a it's a very addictive game. And then uh, so the that's what they call a pocket put and take. And I put them together as uh, keepsakes and mementos for the you know in the trench art style. Just to remember these guys. Yeah. And they make the, the, the tops with the pennies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, makes them easier to get off. That's it? right. I mean, you know, when you're metal detecting as well, you come across uh, the old military buttons. Yeah, you know? yep. And uh, there's a Durham Light Infantry. Clean the buttons up. Um, and put them into the make a put and take pocket put and take out of them as well yeah I think they're incredible so rather than just you know having these bits of bits and pieces of things in your bag of shame you can bring them back to life and make them into something useful you know and it's something so nice to hold isn't it oh, it's just yeah. lovely like you say and you keep it in your pocket it's a good candy little game when you go to you know if you go down the pub have a bit crack with the lads and things like that it's great you know you've got that in your pocket come out oh, you fancy a game of put and take lads mm -hmm. yeah I hold them you know and it's a bit of history as well it's a talking point and it's just, you know, it's a great game. It's a really good game to play. Very addictive. So they're trench art style pocket put and takes. I'm bringing them back to life so people can can play. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, people made all sorts of things in the war years, uh, you know, in trench art style. That's actually a whistle. That's right. It made, made out of the farthings that you find in the fields. And that's Le Havre, which was a World War One port in France, where a lot of our troops got dropped off. That was the first port of call for them before they went to the front. Yep. Various uh, battles. And it's got a secret in there as well, isn't it? That's right. Inside of there, you have uh, another little pocket put and take, a little put and take game a spinner. That just it's actually made into a match striker so you can keep matches in there if you wanted to if you, you know it's, there's a little striking yeah, plate on the yeah. bottom that sits in the nice little trains boiler and then the top goes back on made out of the coins that you find in the fields period coins first world war was it 1917 is it my eyes are it is I know. Nineteen seventeen. We've got a Victorian fallen on the front as well, which is a lot earlier. That one's a bun head. So I'm just you know you bring these things that you find in the fields back to life in some form or other. You get, and the the possibilities of what you can do is endless, isn't it? You it's also, all sorts. Also, oh, I forgot to say as well. It's also a, uh, it's also a whistle, isn't it? Oh, wait, not very good. Hang on, it's also a whistle. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> and it's. Uh, we'll do that again. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep doing it for as long as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hellish, like. And then you find, you know, the first World War buttons. These haven't been found in the fields, but you, you know, you, you do find them in the fields, and they could be turned into uh, mementos, you know, for the Actually, first war pocket putting takes. I found one of those ones. But it, mine was knackered, like it was under yeah. um, pine trees and it was just more or less dissolved. Uh, the Royal, uh, they're the, that's the Royal Scots, um, that's the Coldstream Guards, 
and uh, I'll have to look that one up. You know, there's different ones. This one over here, which is made into a pocket put and take, is a first world one of the uh, Royal uh, Welsh Fusiliers. If I'm right, that was the uh, the regiment that played the football game. Well, all right, the Germans. Yeah. At Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. You know. It was a Christmas day on I think it was. Or New Year's yeah, Day yeah, or something? something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know. So that's there's a bit. Of, there's a button with a bit of history. You it know? is. Ah, yeah. Everybody so, knows that. Uh, Although they don't necessarily know what exact day it was played on. <laughs> I think it was. A, it was nineteen. I think it was nineteen fourteen. Uh, but it was on Christmas Day. I think. Uh, uh, a, I think it was. It was, uh, it was, it was definitely be, Christmas. Uh, because I think it got obviously you know after nineteen fourteen. Got a bit nasty, you know. It did, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah they, they kind of had a, a bit of a truce of football match, That's and then right. they blew a whistle and went back to killing each other. Uh, crazy. Can you read it on there? there All go. put. Yeah. Put two. See us on there. Take, take one. one. I can't read it. This is <laughs> take two. Take all. Take all. And then you've won it. Mhm. Mm and then the, these ones, because there's different styles. One, you know. That's it. Some of them just had initials on, put didn't they? One. Take two, all put. Take one, put two. Take all. So is is take all the end of the game? Alright, basically you just you know you sit round the table, you know, two or more can play and decide on the pot. Say, oh well, we'll just stick ten pence in the middle. Everybody stick ten pence in the middle, right? Okay, stick ten pence in the middle, and the player gets a gets the top, spins it, you know, you spin it on there. And then so lands, and then you say, "What have I done?" You know, take all. Whoa, I've won a lot. <laughs> and then you just, you know, you've grabbed it. But if you know, you spin it round and say, "Right, put put two. The person who spun the spun the disc has to put two in, so you have to put mm -hmm. two ten pences in, etc." So it's simple, isn't it? You know, yeah. and off you go, like, and then you can end up with a great big pot in the middle, mm -hmm. especially if there's you know five or six years like. Right. And then if it you know lands on that, take all. Get in, you know, <laughs> and then the new game starts. Yeah, yeah, and that's what the first world lads used to play like. There's a one there, original one found in the field while Matt Lee Mhm. That's a They've actually even flattened it off on that side and that side. Can you mm -hmm. see? It's just so they can get a hold of it with the fingers. Mm -hmm. Probably the fingers are that cold. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Get a hold of it and spin it, you know. Maybe my fingers are getting that caught now. It's bloody freezing. <laughs> well, there you go, there's a First World War one. That's nice, like. That's it, definitely trench art, that. And, and it is an end of it a bullet. It is a bullet, bullet eye. It looks it like a eye. 303 or something. It's a yeah, yeah, hefty it's a 303. It's pretty lately. And since it's been made into a piece of trench art. So, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to be careful these things that you've got in your bags of shame. They've all got stories to tell, there's things in there that's, uh, you know, I'd like to know what that's representing. I mean, I know it's a, it's a star, but you might have been going to take that a bit further, you know, and put, a, put a, uh, a military crest or something on there, you yep. know. Cause it's, got, it's not like a Star of David or out, it's got too many points, isn't it? That's right, aye. It means something significant to the person who made it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So from the 2014 bag of shame, which is this, I've just sorted out 12 blank coins. So I didn't think I'd found that many, but um, 12 blank coins. And also, from the bag of shame, we've just found a George the First half penny. I don't think I identified that one when I found it. So there's not many of them about. These are like, some of these are from a uh, Civil War um, encampment site. Right. Which I, I did a bit, a bit of a video of once. I must get it up back up on the YouTube. And uh, it was basically a battle between like uh, the forces of Charles I and mm -hmm. Oliver Cromwell. But it was more of a skirmish site, you know, a campsite. Right, right. So, so they were from, from there. Yeah. You know. So a lot of these might apart not from, have been Apart from this one, this one's got a tremendous history. Yeah. But I don't want to really say where the site is. I know. Because, <laughs> you know, if it was, oh, I read. <laughs> you get your cl claim jumpers going on. <laughs> what, what about the big one? I mean, that's massive. Where's that? What, 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 I mean, is it just a steel cannonball? Yeah, yeah, solid steel cannonball. Basically, I think in them days, the troops used to be in formations. 
Aye. So what they do is just aim the cannon. Yeah. So the the cannonball, you know, went through the whole lot of them and took as it went as it went through a formation. It would take a good a good few of them out. You know. It's amazingly. You know, heavy obviously, as well. just as a, as, a, as a solid ball, if you're trying to hit one man, <laughs> a bit pointless. These are from the Civil War camp. And these are basically uh, cauldron feet off the cooking pots oh, yeah. that the troops would have been using. So we, we, we're specifically digging iron signals? No, it was just way. Sometimes, you know, what it's like if you get a deep signal on yeah. some machines anyway, you know, you, you, you kind of, oh, what's that? What's that? I'm not sure about that. And you'll dig down, and, you know, these things are coming up. So then you start thinking, you say, well, it's all history. Yeah. Oh, do you do you actually go around discriminating everything you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think once you if you find yourself on a site and you know you're onto something and it's it is actual site of some importance, then digging the iron is not a bad thing. No, at least you're just getting you Wait, know, artifacts from. Wait a minute, you know? four hundred year old artifact. That's right, I. Yeah, you're going back to the sixteen sixteen forties. Yeah, Civil I bet, War. I bet if that was a whole thing buried in the ground, it would give a cracking right. signal. It'd probably I mean, give an overload signal on mine. Uh -huh. I mean, the, for, the form of a cauldron hasn't changed in hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll get these which are medieval. Mm -hmm. uh, often you will get bronze cauldron feet. Right. Lots and lots of them, you know. Um, I've probably got some examples knocking around here, you know. That's good. But it all tells a story, and it's all part of the same, you know, history of the site, which which needs to be told, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just getting churned around in the plough soil. Yeah. With nothing to see. Some of the tools that these guys were using in the camps as well. So that's from the same site. Same site. Never. Oh, aye. Little hammers for forging or repairing. Yeah. You know. So oh, obviously, these camps have had little blacksmiths as well, you know. I suppose it would have the equivalent know. of like a little machine shop, wouldn't it? That's right, aye. So there they are, they're Civil War hammers. Right. <laughs> I've never found one of them either. Yeah. Honestly, I've well, never When found you're on a them. site, you see, everything's concentrated and they were there for months and months, aye. you know. Yeah, yeah. They weren't there just for a week. Yeah. You know, half a year. Right. In this, in this particular, you know, getting on for that. Yeah. It's just bits of iron, but it tells a story, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. I picked that up before. I love spindle wheels, oh, yeah, yeah. and that one—that's a cracker. I don't honestly, no, think that's, a medi spindle. that's a medieval um, spindle wheel. It's one probably, probably around about I don't know, 1300, 1200 medieval. And it's one of the best examples I've seen. Like just, just because. Well, of you the do detail. find a lot of them, and you know, apparently the women were constantly spinning yarns, like spinning yarn. Aye. That's where you get that sense, yeah. spinning the yarn. Yeah. And I mean, this is just, this is all of the sort of, I, I see, I watch your videos and it's uh, the bag of, the bag of shame, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what well, some of it, it's, it's not, it's, it all tells a story, you know. It do, what's this? Because I found these one are, of those. These are, <laughs> these are actually Victorian. Right. Look, I mean, it's stuck in the bits there, you know. It's, yeah, yeah. But it, it's out of the old um, irons. The irons used to, uh, you know, the iron, the hot oh, irons. Right, right. What they did was the old-fashioned fires that had great big uh, ranges, yeah, you know, yeah. fires, and they'd have hot plates, and they would have an, an iron with an aperture in it, and this would go in the fire or next to the fire to get really hot. Yeah. And then they would lift this out and put it into the into the actual iron, hand iron. Right. And that would. For iron and clothing, or you know, collars. Right. I suppose yeah. that one probably been used for, for collars, etc., and things like that. You know. Oh, oh. But you do get the big, bigger, sort of, uh, cast iron. Yeah. Uh, iron yeah. plates. Honestly, that's exactly the same as the one I found, and I, yeah. I thought it was something like a, just a plough point or something. You know. Yeah. But no, that's what they are. They're out of the flat irons, the old Victorian flat irons. Right. And I think they even used them right up to like the forties and things like that. Yeah. But anywhere from about maybe. Well, I'm not sure, like, but my guess is anyway, 1850 or, or could be in the early, could be George and some of them. Yeah. But you got to be careful because you, th you know you, you look at them and you think, all oh, right, and they used to make um, lead weights, medieval weights as mm -hmm. well, which are that shape, but they're made of lead, and often had a crest on here. Right. And there were wool weights and uh, various weights for weighing whatever materials, you know. And I would just imagine. Just check it out. Just make sure there isn't any. Crests on I would imagine they'd be real collector's pieces as well. 
the wool we had yeah, 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 very, yeah. very collectible. Like, very because yeah. I have the different family coat of arms on on them often. Mm -hmm. Or you know, uh, but they're very collectible and they're made of uh, they're made of lead. Not like these. These yeah. just the, these are just out of flat irons, you know. Yeah. You know the horse harnesses. You know horses ruled the earth, didn't they? You know. That's it. And now they just rule the no, you know the, the, the ready meals in Tesco. Aye, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that bit again. <laughs> <laughs> no, just what I'm saying is, you know, you find these all day long in the fields, because that's where these, you know, these the horses were used. I mean, these things, these are off uh, the old saddle makers, you know, off the saddles mm -hmm. and the leather work from horses. I think these were on the nose, the nose part of a uh, a horse harness, you know. Right. And they just have the different uh, makers on there, the names, saddle makers, you know. So what's that one? Riddle of Newcastle, and then on this one, I think this one's from uh, Coldstream Saddle Makers, and these are all like late Victorian. Yeah, it's just some interesting uh, with a bit of history, isn't it? You know, I mean, you know, everybody thinks, oh, get let's get the Saxon, let's get the Roman, let's go looking for this, that, and the other. I find these things just as interesting. You know the modern things; they all tell a story. And at least you know you can go away and you can get photographs. Yeah. And you, can, yeah. you can you know find old footage and put it together and tell a story about you know these things that are being lost in the fields and uh, have a story to tell. And you can tell it again. You know. What's these what are did? these are Georgian, right? That's massive. You know. Oh, uh, big, so the, the big Georgian doors. Or I see the doors must have been about three inches. There is. There's, there's bigger ones than that. Like people will have them and they'll be thinking, I wonder what the hell that's out of. But they're out of uh, door locks, early door locks. Oh yeah. So all of that and all of that was out of my bag of shame. All of this, right? All of that. I mean, there's that in there, and your half pennies is in there. All of that is out of your. No wonder it weighed so much. I didn't think there was bag of shame, shame, you know. They're the, no, they're Roman coins and little trench or crucifix or something. Yeah. Someone's made, you know. I found uh, that. That's a lot, a lot of people. A lot of people find these, you know, and they'll say, "Oh, the buttons, you know, the buttons and things that they are not." But I don't believe they are. These are actually sawmills. They're a kid's toy. Yeah. And what you Hence did was you just put your your yarn, which is made by one of these. Yeah, yeah. So you, they make a yarn out of this. And you put your yarn through there, and we've all done it. Oh wait, done it as a kid myself. Yeah, yeah with a bit of card. Put the that's right. I right, put your your yarn through there, and you wind it up, and then you start pulling it like that, and this revolves round. You know, yeah, this, yeah. And they're, and they're known as um, sawmills. So they're a toy, a kid's toy, and that's or just something you know. I think they could go back as far as the medieval period, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because mm -hmm. I found these things on where I've been finding medieval silver hammers. But it's one of those things that I suppose it's been played for generations. I, I've I've made yeah. them before. I've made buttons. them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You know, I have big and buttons, that's, and that's what I believe the anyway, sawmills. I thought it was a, when I first found it. I thought it was a huge dress weight or something, and then I thought, wait, well, why has it got the teeth on it? Well, that's but right. That, that totally makes sense. Aye. It does. Sawmills, aye. Well, I for one really enjoyed that. I love to find out about the things that I find that I haven't got a clue about. And I mean that little lead shape with the teeth on that was possibly a Georgian or earlier little sawmill, a little saw, a kid's toy. That little artifact, although it's so simple, is such an excellent thing to find. For somebody, that would have been their main toy. It's not like nowadays when we've got PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones and all sorts of fancy phones. Little lead things or little replica cannons, toy soldiers, they would have been the main toy of the day. To find those things and put them in some sort of historical context is absolutely great. That's what makes metal detecting so good. Not going out grave robbing and night hawking. It's about finding all those little things that were personal to people. Things that have no intrinsic value, but they have a, a wealth of knowledge associated with them. Knowledge and understanding of the past. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you check out Gary's channel.
Again, the link is in the description below. I'll also put a link on to one or two of the things that he's selling on eBay. If you're watching this after a week, two weeks, a month, six months, they might be sold, but they should still be recorded in that link. If you click see other items or see items for sale or something, it should take you to things that he's selling at that particular time. And he's had all sorts of wonderful things, all connected to the First and Second World War, using things that have been found in fields. It's a, it's a brilliant thing that he's doing, and it's, he's making wonderful things. Thanks for watching. I'd like to see them in prison, um, polishing a different sort of helmet.